But again, I know this is a hard, hard hour to spend, uh, especially with the weather outside. I didn't even wear a coat here. I, uh, I really didn't. I mean, it's like that free night is outside. It's unbelievable. And uh, has anybody been out shopping for their swimsuits today over the lunch hour? <laughs> Boy, because spring is almost here. Uh, today, um, the topic that we're talking about, and you guys have uh, some handouts here, and the handouts are, are some different blogs that I have actually wrote that uh, have a lot of tools that we'll be able to use. And uh, for this presentation, honestly, uh, and again, I'll let uh, uh, Jason and Rachel let you guys know, but this is a two-hour presentation. It's going to go for two hours. <laughs> they let you guys know I'm not, I'm not going to be here that long. But what I can offer you guys is something that can be worked on every single day for the rest of your life. It's, it's a very in-depth topic, and it's called the Mindset for Fitness Success. It's, uh, I mean, there's so many books that we could actually write about this, and it might impact us in all different elements of of our journey of fitness and, and where you're currently at at this point. And, uh, but in your, in your handout, though, we'll reference to several of these different ones. And uh, the 12 common mistakes that people make in fitness, uh, the next page you're going to have, we'll reference to, is called the, uh, the eight habits of very successful individuals and, and how, to be, um, how to avoid being a successful loser. And uh, that's going to be a very good one, guys. And we'll also touch base on why quick fix diets are not your best approach for having the right mindset for long-term fitness. And then also through there as well, we have a tracking chart that we'll talk a little bit about that's going to go through and help us get in the right set of mind right before we get ready. And last but least, on the very back page is going to be a little mini workout that uh, can help us get in the right mindset to get started, get motivated, and maybe uh, something that can be very, very simple but it can also be uh, elevated to be pretty, pretty in-depth. Uh, for this topic, guys, I, I actually did a lot of research on this. This one is one of my, my favorite uh, topics that we do cover. Um, a lot of the, what I do and my staff that I have and my trainers and group fitness staff and our, even our uh, front desk staff to, uh, to my brother and I is, is trying to keep people motivated. And uh, that's, I love doing this. And this is something that, uh, that uh, is something that I, I am very passionate about and always try to be as positive as I possibly can. Um, and, uh, and some of the things that I use for myself, I'll try to share with you guys as well. But for this topic, I uh, did a lot of different research and a lot of different ways of how to motivate large groups of people. And I kind of came across a few things that I thought was pretty inspiring um, that uh, large groups of people uh, are motivated in different ways. Of course, positive, you know, having a positive environment, teamwork, setting goals is a great way for a work environment. But what actually inspires individuals personally, um, there are four big main things that they did cover that I'd like to share with you guys. And uh, people are, are motivated in the number one reason that uh, I wanted to touch base on this before we get started is, is kind of trying to recognize the mindset of uh, being successful in fitness. So the top four that they use is physiological needs are a motivator for a lot of people. The second big one is uh, their personal safety. Is a big motivator for individuals to stay on track. And uh, the third one is belonging or accepting in, in a group is, uh, is very, very important. And the fourth thing is, uh, you know, self-esteem. These are all things that we try to work on uh, every day of our life. And uh, these are the big four reasons why people, you know, really try to work on day-to-day -day habits, uh, get in the positive right mindset to get going on the right track. And those are the four that I kind of came across. Also, though, I, I, how many of you have uh, ever heard of Lou Holtz? You guys ever heard of Lou Holtz? You know, I've watched actually three different YouTube uh, presentations on him uh, just for this presentation today. And if you know who he is or if you don't know who he is, um, even if you don't like Notre Dame football or anything about Notre Dame football, he is actually hired many times to come into businesses or do presentations on how to inspire and his motivational speeches. But one thing I kind of watched him as I watched my last one last night, this guy um, is a very positive guy, but he hits home on a lot of good points that I thought were good and, and how to uh, you know, help us get in the right mindset for fitness. That uh, he's a, in a way is like a Dr. Phil. He's like a realist. He's straight, he's blunt, and he's to the point. And uh, some of the biggest things that we have to overcome in fitness are three big things. And uh, those three big things, guys, are that we all struggle with is time management. Time management is one thing that we must get, you know, get that under control to have the right mindset for success in business. Um, unfortunately, in my member, in my uh, health club, I'm actually the one that does all the cancellations. So I'm actually the one that does the paperwork and 
does the final processing to make sure everything is taken care of on a cancellation of membership. The one thing that saddens me the most, though, is when I see the form, because there is real adjust for a reason, you know, and that way that we can become better. Maybe our customer service was lacking. Maybe our instructors or our classes weren't what they were wanting. Or it's just something that uh, we maybe we are overlooking. But the one that kind of saddens me the most is most people are honestly put down on a cancellation notice is no time. And that's, that's kind of sad. Because when I step back and I think about that when I'm doing my paperwork, that, um, you know, that's just something that, that can definitely be overcome. That's just a basically, in my mindset, that is an excuse that, uh, you know, way that we can do different things to help people work this into their lifestyle, take health and fitness as a priority, and, uh, and hopefully help them, you know, stay on track, stay motivated, and keep, you know, working on their daily fitness, you know, until the day they really can work well. But uh, the one thing on this guy is on time management. Does anybody uh, need any inspirational quotes from anybody? Does anybody have a favorite that they like? Okay. Um, does anybody uh, read a very inspirational message or um, anybody uh, attend conferences on motivational speakers? Um, does anybody have a favorite quote they'd like to share? Yeah, I'm motivated as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> by cool, by the time I'm done today, you guys are going to go backwards out of here. Um, some of my favorites, guys. Um, a guy that really hit home with me as well is other than Lou Holtz. I, I love reading him for a long time, but to, to actually watch the, the actual speeches were real motivating. But the one that's uh, in the health and fitness world, we all know uh, Richard Simmons, right? Okay, we know Richard. Yeah, Richard. Now, Richard Simmons, um, what I always tell our instructors and our group fitness instructors, our boot camp instructors, and our personal trainers, no matter whatever you might think of Richard Simmons, the reason he's been around a long time is he inspires and motivates got something unique about him. I actually had the privilege to watch him do a motivational speech at St. Louis like 10 years ago. And uh, I remember as a little kid, my dad, when I, my dad would sit there in front of the TV and laugh and as he was on doing his sweaty and the whole new thing and all these different videos that he had. Because he used to actually have a morning show uh, where he could actually see his exercise and then my dad, you know, I'm only 21, that was just last year by the way. But anyway, <laughs> he, uh, we used to sit there and watch this, but when I had the opportunity to go to St. Louis and listen to him, I, I was like, all right, this is going to be, I want to see why has this guy been around for so many years and has helped so many people, there's got to be something unique about it. How did he motivate these people that were, you know, struggling day to day to day and completely changed their life around? What's so unique about this guy? Because his fitness level, he's not like a Tony Horton from P90X walking around. He's an average looking individual. So when I sit there in the conference, I don't know how many thousands of people are around us, I wore a hat. I just really focus. You know, I sit down, I'm like, okay, the doors in here, and I'm going to watch his face and just focus on him. But what I got out of the message from this individual was he really, really showed that he was inspiring in many ways that I felt because he cared about you. He accepted you where you're currently at, and wherever your struggles were in your past, it didn't matter because your past and your failures don't matter now. We're going to put that one foot forward and keep on moving. So the power of the mindset in fitness is huge. And uh, when I left that conference that day, uh, or that night, I thought, I can kind of almost see what these people are. And I was not personally struggling with my health and fitness because that's what my job, you know, I, you know I'm not going to um, say that I'm perfect by any means, but for the individuals and the clients that he works with, that was very uplifting. And I could see that message coming across just to us in the crowd and how he inspires and motivates people. The second guy that came to, to really in a mindset of really being positive is the guy that sailed the gazelle. You guys know that guy, Tony Little? You know, the guy that's on there, the long blonde hair and the hat on and he's all goofy. And he's not, uh, he's been around a long time. I mean, he's sold millions of those gazelles. And, but something about that guy as well is unique and inspiring. Another one, Billy Blank. If you watch Billy Blank, that guy, even if you knew him, and he's been around a lot of years, he is very inspiring. I actually tell one of our number one kickboxing instructors in the whole universe, Marika, I'm like, watch Billy Blank, meet him, and watch him. His energy is huge. Because the mindset is that everybody's tired people. Everybody's tired. So we all want to feel look and feel better day to day to day. But uh, the biggest thing, guys, when it comes into time management, um, my favorite quote that I like to use is, and this is a good one, though, and when I see those cancellations come through, I try, if I could say it to people, I would. 
One who has no time, one who has no time for their health today, will have no health for their time tomorrow. Now that one really, I like that. That's one of my favorite I learned out of years ago. But if you have no time for your health today, you will have no health for your time tomorrow. I really think about that one a lot. And if individuals understand that they're busy and their lifestyle, but one thing that they have not done for the right mindset, that's one fitness, is they have not made health and fitness of themselves a priority. Not yet. But once your health fails you. I'll use myself as an example, and I'll use that in a second. You'll do anything you possibly can to get it back. Once it fails, no amount of money, no amount of time, no amount of anything will get you back from getting that health back once it's gone. And uh, this is where the first one became a big reality to me 10 years ago. 10 years ago, actually, last um, January 26th. A story I've shared with many of you guys before. Uh, my background was, um, you know, I was a personal trainer for a long time and, and did a lot of health and fitness and health clubs here in town and did staff training. But one of my passions was uh, competing in international powerlifting. And uh, at the young age of uh, 20, uh, I had some good success in the, in the world of powerlifting where I set two world records in powerlifting at the age of 20. And then all the way up until five years ago, I was actually competing in powerlifting. But I felt pretty, pretty good. You know, I felt pretty bulletproof, felt great. But what I did was I had one last powerlifting meet that I was at. And uh, as I was performing a squat, which is one of the three movements that we do, um, I was coming up out of the bottom of the squat and ended up actually uh, rupturing seven quadriceps tendons total in my leg. And what that did to me was I went from basically being bulletproof, felt great, it was bigger, how big I am now, I'm like, I knew I think I was like Lance Armstrong up here, <laughs> but I was 204 pounds. And um, when I fell in the bottom of the squat, when it ruptured and tears tendons off your kneecap, At that time, though, I had a four-month baby. I had a uh, four-year-old, no, sorry, 22-month-old her, and then my other one's 22 months older than that. So they've been about six years, six, four, and about eight weeks. And um, having a wife that basically ended up having to take care of a third child, which is me. And that's one thing I really felt that by sitting there, at, and our whole health focus developed from this whole time period, because I'm sitting there thinking about bulletproof, took things for granted, Amazing, and, and a life that changed. Now I am relying on somebody else to take care of me. Simple thing. And it had the problem. My food, my dishes, my laundry. We basically had to wait on this for him for, for up to 10 months. And the thing about it was, it's disheartening in this scene. And as I'm thinking, that one who has no time for their health today will have no health for their time tomorrow. You know, at the young age of, uh, of 31 at the time, uh, the thing is, I'm sitting there thinking about. What if I'd have been 20 years, 10, 15, 20 years older, and I wasn't able to recover as quick and fast as I was? Or what if I wasn't motivated anyway to want to get my health back because it had failed me? How long would it have taken me? Would I, where would I be at today? And that's one of the things I always think when I see these cancellations is you have no health or you have no time and those sort of things. But if you don't make your health fitness a priority, you never know once that health leaves you. But after that time of recovery, of that sort of an accident, uh, my mindset to help people and, and inspire people to get even stronger, um, all the uh, different struggles, frustration, depressional type feelings, uh, self doubt, you know, all these things came across my head thinking, man, I wonder if people feel this way in their day to day fitness. And they truly do. You know, they really do. The reason why this topic is so big at this time of the year is January is a big motivating month for everybody to put their health in fitness. You know, they always start in January. They say, you know, everybody wants to make that big change. But right now, the six-week mark comes out where a lot of people are starting to flutter. They don't know if it's that fun anymore. Oh, my gosh, I'm so far. Um, or my time management is getting not, you know, it's not working for me as well. So the magic number, though, keep in mind in health and fitness, is try to create a habit that you've got to stay consistent for 21 days. You can stay consistent for 21 days in a habit. Hopefully, it will become a, somewhat of a lifestyle. But the big magic number is that we are going to face here at the health club, though, is 12 weeks. In 12 weeks, the health club, they know it's a 65% fail rate, drop off rate in health club. The reason why people uh, drop off in this big, magic 12 week number, you don't see any results. 
that they thought they were going to do. Two, they're starting to lack motivation. And I'm going to talk to you about that in a second. And the third reason is they just don't have the knowledge to teach kids better. They don't seek the assistance of somebody that could be qualified to help them. They don't seek the assistance of a support group to help them, a coworker, a family member, encourage others to exercise with them. All these things that are important for the having the right mindset to be successful. But the thing is, guys, on the the, uh, the, the whole thing about um, you know extreme burnout and all the things that are going to come upon these people in the next four weeks that that started in January, it has to. The biggest thing you have to do is when you start your health and fitness in the right mindset, is you need to actually really recognize the reason why you're starting. Now, a lot of people have what we call temporary motivation. Temporary motivation is um, the weather today. The weather. Oh man, motivated. Our club tonight will probably be very busy. Our kickboxing class and all everything that we teach will probably be very busy. The weather is a big motivator for people on the way that they're supposed to feel. But one thing you know is, is temporary motivation will burn itself out. And uh, a lot of times you'll see this with weddings. Okay, uh, you, you see this a lot. They'll do anything they can to get in that wedding dress or that to look good on that one big day. Then they still want it to carry through to the honeymoon. But once that's all done, all the things that they sacrificed, they're going to give it back up and go back to their own habits. You see that a million times. You know, you see that a lot. But the one thing is, though, you have to recognize is temporary motivation is good if you were popular. But for long-term success in fitness, sometimes it's not your best choice to do it. And uh, does anybody have a, 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 ever thought about like a vacation that they'd love to go to? Anybody? Anybody done one they'd like to do? All the time. Every day. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, any, any places called it? Yeah. Uh, Italy. Italy. Okay. This is a, a great, this could be, you know, I, I use the example myself. First time I thought it was Australia. Okay. How long would you like to stay away for a vacation? Well, we're going in August. Oh, good. Well, you did the job for us. Okay. So here's an example of temporary motivation. She had, uh, are you taking uh, South Sea Asia? Okay. And um, so they're going to plan this trip, guys, and they're going to have to, you'll have to get everything up there for you.
room, some in the Lincoln. I was reading an email as I was eating lunch today. Lincoln, I don't know if you saw this today, um, I have it in my phone here. I think it's on the Yahoo main page. Lincoln rated number four best city for running. Best city for running is Lincoln, number four. So, and there's so many great trails around here, especially from where you're located here. Yeah. A lot of great things to take, uh, take advantage of in Lincoln. There's a lot of them. A couple other things, guys. If you look at your very first handout, the very first handout is the 12 common mistakes that uh, a lot of people do, uh, do have uh, when it comes for fitness and success. One thing is, is, is you've got to have a plan. You know, the mindset and when you start health and fitness is you've got to have a, a beginning standard to use, such as what your other sheet's going to show here is these little beginning tracking sheets. Does anybody use uh, anything like this? Do they? Yeah? Good. Good. Um, personally, I don't use these. Just want to let you guys know that. I use all spreadsheets. Um, I track everything on all of our clients on a spreadsheet. Um, but this is a great example for the setting that we're in. See, the thing is, though, keep in mind, for the mindset of having been success, the one of the biggest ones that people are raising their, their, their success in is off this body weight. The body weight is probably the reason why that's happening the most is because it's just the way you do it. Body weight can be checked at home, anywhere, work, or wherever you may have. But one that a lot of people should look at for fitness success would be your body fat. Body fat is kind of a little bit more difficult to do, unless you're in a health club or you have a home system that does it to your feet and you weigh in. But um, the thing about body fat, though, is that that body weight scale can be your friend or it can be your enemy. If you're only rating your success off the way the scale is showing, you can be the happiest person in the world. But one thing that I do find about this sort of thing, though, is nothing is ever good enough. You know, I always want more, you always want more, you always want more. So this is a this is like chasing the golden carrot that is just pulling you along the whole time you're chasing it. But if it goes up by any means, it's a self mental defeater for a lot of people and they're like, I'm done. You know, or gosh, why am I doing like this? It's not working. Or all these different things. You know, these are all mindsets that we have. This one though, <coughs> if the key is on it, is you want to wait weekly. I truly believe that. But you must weigh at the same time weekly, same time of day, and to be consistent. In order to have a good, good solid foundation, you must have that. So keep in mind, uh, the other day we had all the girls. There's only one day per week of the month for the girls to weigh. So don't let that other three weeks blow you away, thinking, oh my gosh, it's all over the place. It's not, I'm six pounds heavier today than last week or whatever. So don't let that defeat you mentally, okay? The body fat reason. The reason why body fat is such a, a very important standard that we like to use is body fat. If your body fat levels are in a higher level of range, but your scale, your body weight scale is low, that's not good. You could be the lightest person on the scale with a huge or higher high risk rate of body fat. And we have three things to really have a factor of uh, concern. One, higher rate of uh, type 2 diabetes. Two, heart disease. That's a big one. It's a very big one. Osteopenia or osteoporosis, which that treatment process is. So keep in mind, though, the silent killer is what they call the sarcopenia, is the silent killer. Every year after the age of 25, we lose a quarter percent of muscle tissue every year. Unlike a tree that's dying every day, we can actually reverse our anti aging process of our body. So the food and the things that we ingest in our body are so important because we recreate ourselves with the food that we create and we get into that we feed. So that good, healthy food is so important because you recreate that in your body again and again and again. Keep in mind, in, in older populations of individuals, in the BMI charting system, they actually do rate very good. So in the BMI, the body mass index, they might actually be pretty good on that chart. But also, though, their body fat levels can be significantly high, therefore fractures are, are very high. Unfortunately, though, in the older population of individuals, once they fracture a hip, which is common, and so many other things come with it. Uh, unfortunately, that's how my grandma passed away, fractured a hip, then came pneumonia, then came everything else, and it was kind of a train wreck after that. So, but resistance training is very important for individuals to do. So you want to make sure that you are either doing body weight training, dumbbell training, machine training, balloon training, in order to keep that lean muscle tissue going 
And muscle tissue also, though, is very important for metal, uh, for your metabolism. So that's important, guys, on this body fat check. And um, that's very important. The next one is coming in on this one, too, three pieces of paper, but it's going to go through your actual measurements. Now, measurements are for some individuals that are doing them at home. It's very challenging for them to do. It's hard to do a bicep measurement with one hand. But these are things that are always going to be fuel to your fire for success in fitness. It's keeping uh, a lovely tracker in here. All right? Keep in mind, though, that hip to weight ratio, if you have a larger abdomen and a smaller, you know, a smaller hip ratio, you are raising your risk of heart disease at a higher level of cancer. So it's very important to kind of check those guys. As you're going through, keep it on a monthly basis. A lot of your online applications, such as like livestrong.com, uh, maybe a, a calorie counter, fit gain, a lot of your online actual spreadsheet programs, that allow you to track your progress. And some of them are really good too, where they'll, they'll send you a reminder if you haven't logged in in a while. So it's yelling at you to get back on there. So those are some really good positive things, guys. Um, what we go back into, the reason again for the mindset, now that you've got a, a standard or a, a, set, a beginning point, most individuals really that are getting into health and fitness don't really set firm, concrete goals. Does anybody ever wake up like with a burning desire just to wake up? I'm so excited to wake up. Does anybody fight the total war every morning? One thing, though, that I try to do is I play a little game. I, I put the three alarms, because I do know that I have at least 20 people waiting for me at 5 a.m. in the morning to see me. And I, I, I just can't ever overstate that. That would blow me away by doing that. If I, if I all of a sudden get a phone call, ah, yeah, your whole class is waiting for you. Where are you at? I'm like, oh, man. So I don't ever want to do that. But so the three things that I do is going back to the next reason to go back to time management. When you are in the morning individual, One of the most successful thing, guys, again, is setting these concrete goals and your time management is planning your meals in advance. Remember the next motivational quote, uh, quote that I like is if you, if you plan the, uh, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So that's a good one. And that's very important, guys. So if you, if you fail to plan in advance, you're going to fail. So the one thing that I have used is uh, how many of you eat breakfast? Well, one thing that's helped me, I'm just going to be honest, I'm not an Emma Lagasse. By any, I like food TV, though, but I'm not one of those guys. I'm not yet, and I ask my, my wife yells at me for dirtying up the kitchen. She's like, you need to kick in a mess every morning you leave. I get that phone call. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. Well, one thing I've done is, rather than dirtying a pan, does anybody, anybody ever use one of these? This one here, guys. Now, keep in mind, your breakfast is, is the most important meal of your whole day. If you skip breakfast, overall energy of your day and such activity. I'll just be honest, I'm not going to uh, dirty a pan after being yelled at 50,000 times. And hi, I sleep to the last alarm that's ready to go. The only alarm that really gets me out of bed is this cell phone. But otherwise, I the one across the room, I'll let it go. The other one beside me, I'll take that one off. But at the last second, I'm thinking of all these different
if anybody uh, in our VM, dirty enough to kick in and getting that phone call from my wife, cracking eggs and getting all over the countertop is not a good thing to leave, okay? But one thing though is cracking eggs and getting shells in this is a nightmare. So what I like to do though is once I put this in, I have one of these little things in my, my water bottle at home. On this water bottle, what I do is I've got three eggs sitting there. Before I stir them up, I'll put this over the top of my egg yolk. I squeeze this, put it right on top of the yolk, I let go of it, and it sucks that yolk right up inside this bottle. Put it in the back. Take the next one, squeeze it, suck it up in there, shove it in the back. Simple time management thing I've ever found in my life. And I get nothing, I don't get the phone call, I don't get anything. So I quick, 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 done. Watch that on video. <laughs> my friend, uh, my friend, long story. I uh, have a good friend, Matt Jackson, that um, really a big fitness enthusiast. He sent me a link to this. So I'm like, cool. No more phone call during the day if they're in the kitchen. So just squeeze, squeeze it, dump it. It's easy. So, a couple of good things, guys. So remember, though, going back to the time management thing again, think I have no time to exercise. The most important thing is, though, the busiest people in the world.
take any measurements, all their body fat, and everything's done. The other thing that's very hard for individuals to do, which is very tough, is to take that first set of controlled photos of a reality check. And uh, I really truly believe that. Now I've shared that story with you guys before. When I went to Von Mar, photo shopping, has anybody ever been to Von Mar shopping? In the dressing room, have you noticed how they have like three angles of mirrors? Three mirrors. Not really, because they hit me as a reality check. In my old days, I used to have a really good back. I mean, I used to have a good back, but I had to do a training. So I don't remember in there, I put on the shirt, I looked at my. I got a close, I, I seriously got a glimpse of my dad. I said, like, oh.
I don't understand. I just go against everything I'm thinking in my head, and she knows that. But my brother and I don't believe in that. And uh, well, the thing is, though, this was not her first time of choosing this program. She had chosen this program prior to before, had lost a very bit of substantial amount of weight, but once the short-term motivation burned off, she could see what she was wanting to do all the way to the back. And it came back more. Now she chose it again, the weight will come off again, wedding, and then when it's done, it'll come back, and then it'll come back more again. The more and more and more and more you do this sort of stuff, I truly believe that the reason why you diabetes are at a higher rate than they are, the reason why we have as many thyroid issues as we do have, and a lot of the other common health effects from choosing programs such as this, or people feeling like they're failing with fitness. Because if you do something we did, like her dropping 30 pounds in no time at all, but then all of a sudden it's coming back and now you don't feel very good about yourself again. But now you have to go back to the position of being successful to do it again. <coughs> and you don't want to do stuff like that. This is a great example if you have an opportunity to read through that and kind of takes you through um, a process of that can actually really happen. And um, many of you probably can recognize some of the plans out there that are like this as I have some names what they are. And so if you have a chance, read through that guys. And um, one other good thing guys I'd like to do say is uh, you know, if in doubt, if you are struggling with your health and fitness in any means of daily motivation, form a support system. Um, and especially in, an, in a work environment like you have, uh, form a support system. And if you still struggle on exercising on your own, I'd highly recommend that you choose a group setting type fitness. Group setting type fitness has a 225% success rate. You guys have on-site type fitness classes that Rachel teaches. I highly recommend that you guys participate in those. Pretty much. The yoga I believe you did yesterday, up memory. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to remember that, even though we should probably do it. <laughs> you should take participate in that kind of stuff. The boot camps on site, take participate in those things. Group fitness activity is key to <coughs> be successful. Usually successful in the nutrition, if you can use it in a group type setting. That's why Weight Watchers is very successful, is that they have <coughs> self weighing, journaling, goals, and also. Group fitness, group uh, support system, online type system, uh, Facebook, uh, like the presentation I did yesterday, I actually uh, stopped Jake Neuheisen and, and Chrissy Lightstruck and said you will be at my seminar yesterday. So they couldn't get away from it on Facebook. It was, uh, I treat them on Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is our social media. <laughs> but that's the thing, guys. Support groups are huge, uh, especially in health and fitness. And, and having friends that have the same common goals, um, that is very, very, very successful. And the last one we use in our facility is called the 10th person series. You want to surround yourselves with nine other people that have the same health and fitness goals and motivation that you have. The key is that you will become a template of those people. And that's the key is you want to surround yourself around with people that are supportive, that are helping you push yourself in the right direction that you want to be around. And, uh, and you want to avoid what we call the, uh, the crabs. The crabs are people that are trying to sink you, or the sharks when you're swimming.
you have to take pills to get to get some sleep, otherwise you're going to be in bad for nine years. It's pretty bad. So having my brother come over, because uh, I have um, no other relatives, I, my, my mom had passed away years and years ago of cancer. So uh, uh, and so for my brother to come over, a guy that knows nothing about changing a diaper, <laughs> and uh, seeing him frustrated that trying to take care of a baby um, was a fuel to my fire to try to get healthier faster. Very motivated, and because uh, my, my health had failed, I wanted to get it back as fast as I possibly could because I knew that so many people had to step up to the plate to help me. And uh, that was a big motivator. Because uh, it's more or less, uh, you, know, just, you know, suck it up and basically be like, I'm going to get you guys where you can't get better faster. You know, so that was a big thing. Um, but there was a lot of setbacks and bumps in the road. You know, a lot of self doubt and a lot of depression type feelings. But um, what I was saying is, like a lot of times, uh, you know, if you had an injury or something that set you back, uh, the goal though is, you know, and the thing that was told to me that um, that motivated me at that given point was, uh, even though I was in a wheelchair for those period of months, and I never had that other opportunity to do that because that's uh, pretty pretty damn good, and uh, and especially like that. But the one thing that I had to have, and the individual tell me, um, in my eyes, was, was the best trainer I've ever known, was Captain Brian Bailey. Uh, he was a strength coach for Nebraska for 20 years, and then was a USC Chapel Spirit youth guy, and a good friend of mine. That um, I remember talking to him on the phone, and basically just trying to have him feel sorry for me in a way. You know, and uh, you know, we all want someone to comfort you. And uh, he wouldn't do it. And uh, he just said, uh, one thing that I thought really hit the home, He's like, are you going to the gym? And I cried. I'm in a wheelchair, man. No. Am I going to a wheelchair? There is. No. I'm not going. And he said, uh, well, what's wrong with your own body? Oh, it's not there. No. And, and a good coach, so we're being told here, but a good choice word gets you back to the gym. You can still train your upper body. Even though you can't train your legs, there's always a will. There's a will. There's a way. Get to the gym and work on what you can. I thought that really hit home. And I remember after him on the phone, I'm like, you know what? He's right. Jeez, my legs, both legs were in double knee braces, walked out of third position for a period of about eight months. Okay, let's go to the gym. And I did. I went to the gym. I, uh, I went in. I, it's embarrassing. I'm not going to lie. It's embarrassing. If you're in a wheelchair, it's very embarrassing. But uh, to me, I felt like that. And so I have a whole new respect for people that are just, you know. And, um, so I go to the gym and I do the best I could. I, I wheel up to the dumbbells and I do my curls. You know, and that felt weird. People were looking at me and it was weird to go to a restaurant and people look at you. It just felt weird, you know. And then I go over to the bench press. But the thing that Brian Bailey said is, in the choice of words I can't really repeat, <laughs> get your butt in the gym. Now get there, quit feeling sorry for yourself, and um, go get it, you're going to get better. And uh, so I guess I would say that too. Uh, individuals that we've had, uh,
this girl is colder than all out. Her and her husband come in. Her husband pulls her out of the chair and put her on the computer so that she can still exercise her upper body. No legs at all, of course. That's just in there with legs present. And the thing is that she used this me or this hired me to help her on was she can't do any sort of cardiovascular exercise. You know, and that stung me for a second because I'm thinking I'm like, what is this?